Hi, I'm Holly Wakastora, a certified Iyengar yoga teacher in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and today we're practicing yoga for fertility of all kinds. And this is Megan. She's going to show us how to practice a Salamba Sarvangasana shoulder stand from Chatushpadasana at the wall into Ardhahalasana half plow pose using the chair and then up into shoulder stand. So Megan has placed a belt around the top of her breasts to keep them out of her face as she's practicing the pose so she feels like she can breathe because she can. <laughs> but when her breasts are in the way, she can't. So see how she's going to um, roll onto her left side and then over onto her back. And she has three blankets. Her shoulders are at the top of them. Her buttocks are on the bolster at the wall. And if you were shorter, you could just put a brick there. And um, she's going to take her buttocks her bolster onto the blankets and her buttocks onto the bolster so she can get more of her upper um, shoulder blade more up, she can get up higher on the tops of her shoulders and get her shoulder blades underneath her a little bit better. Now that chair Megan has already checked it to make sure that it's an arm's distance overhead. When she reaches back her fingers just take them all the way down to the floor just come to the legs. There you go. Okay, now bring your arms back to your sides. Okay, now watch out. Megan's going to press the tops of her shoulders down and the backs of her upper arms and her elbows and lift her buttocks, her kidneys, and her back ribs up and away from the floor. And see, then she moves the bolster out of the way so she can wiggle her shoulders a little bit closer to the wall. Her neck is not on the blankets but her shoulders and the backs of her upper arms are. She's lifted the whole back of her body up with her hands. Okay, now from here, watch how she takes one leg overhead and then the other and brings her feet to the chair seat. The toes, sorry. Okay, now watch how she's going to take her buttocks closer to her heels, walk her feet back until her hips are over her shoulders. And she can walk her hands down her back more it's actually up, but down towards the floor more. Yep, and then from here, she extends her knees and takes one leg up and then the other leg to meet it. And from her shoulders to her ankles, she's in one line. So at first, the legs want to slant, the thighs want to slant, right? And she's going to lift them up away from her pelvis and take her ankles a little further back towards the wall behind her so she feels the weight in her elbows, not just in her shoulders. So the base of the pose is the top of the shoulders, the backs of the upper arms, and the elbows. And she's going to see that her pelvic floor is parallel to the floor. Okay, now she's spreading her collarbones away from each other, but pressing her outer elbows in so that her inner elbows move closer towards each other. To come out of this pose after Five to ten minutes, she's going to take one foot to the chair, the other foot, toes tucked under to the chair, and just be in halasana. Lifting the knees up away from the floor and the thighs to help lighten the pelvic region, that apana vayu in the pelvis, and enliven the legs. And then from here, she takes her hands to the bolster, walks her feet closer to the front of the chair seat, and then rolls down onto the bolster with her knees bent into her chest. And her feet end up on the wall. See how she keeps her head and shoulders down? And then to come out, you can slide back until your buttocks are on the floor in front of the blankets.
and you can either stretch your legs, but if that doesn't feel good in your back, you can keep your knees bent. And just rest here for a few minutes, breathing deeply, exhaling from the top of your skull into the sockets of your eyes, into the canals of your ears, and the channel of your throat, into the treasure trove of your heart. And then inhaling into that sacred space that is the seat of the soul, the abode of the soul, that the texts tell us is the size of the thumb and dwells within the lotus of the heart. So the exhalations are pacifying and cooling to the brain, your brain cells, and your nervous system via your organs of perception, and your inhalations are fulfilling at the seat of the heart. 